Another Norfolk Southern train derails in Ohio. Two Americans are murdered in Mexico. And new January 6 footage paints a whole new picture. And more on this week's headlines. Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Colombia has proposed shipping 70 hippopotamuses to sanctuaries in India and Mexico. This move is being suggested to help control the hippo population in Colombia, as they're an invasive species. The hippos are descendants of illegally imported hippos that belonged to drug lord Pablo Escobar. As an American, sending something that came into your country illegally to Mexico or India seems ridiculous to me. They should just send them to Martha's Vineyard. Why waste a chance to get some cheap political points? And yes, I know hippos are freshwater animals, and Martha's Vineyard is surrounded by salt water. But considering these hippos are descendants of Pablo Escobar, I bet they can handle some white powdery substances. Speaking of things being transported, another train from Norfolk Southern derailed in Ohio. Yes, another one. What does Norfolk Southern have against that state? I haven't seen someone hate Ohio that much since literally every person I've met who's from Ohio. But don't worry, no toxic chemicals were spilled or intentionally set on fire from this wreckage, at least according to a Norfolk Southern general manager, who said, a lot of the cars that were actually derailed were empty boxcars. Well, I guess we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Unless you're living in East Palestine, I'd try breathing that air as little as possible. Norfolk Southern did admit that there were other trains of theirs nearby that were transporting hazardous materials. So this announcement comes off less, you have nothing to fear, and more, phew, really dodged a bullet on this one. If you're wondering why there are so many more train derailments all of a sudden, the answer is there aren't. We're all just more aware of them, thanks to the train wreck in East Palestine that caused an environmental disaster and got lots of media coverage. On average, there are actually 1,700 train derailments in America a year. A lot of this is due to precision scheduled railroading, which is a system that gets trains to where they're going faster, but cuts back on staff and inspections. Many within the industry have warned for years this was a recipe for disaster. And railroad workers recently threatened to go on strike over unsafe working conditions and lack of time off. But that strike was blocked by President Biden, who said he wanted to side with the workers, but ultimately forced a compromise that favored the rail companies to avoid supply chain disruptions that could have hurt the economy. Boy, I'm glad that didn't immediately come back to haunt him. Although considering how many mistakes he's made, there's probably a long line to haunt old Joe. So the good news is there aren't suddenly more train wrecks. The bad news is so many train wrecks have been occurring and we just never noticed it. This was Norfolk Southern's third train derailment in just over a month, and they announced they would make safety adjustments moving forward. They're just now deciding to make adjustments. You mean they saw this and thought, eh, it's fine. Speaking of disasters, Florida. Officials in Charlotte County, Florida, warned its citizens that a local man died after contracting Nigleria foliare, a brain-eating amoeba. Infections from Nigleria foliare occur when tainted water enters through the nostrils. Residents were warned not to wash their face or rinse their sinuses until the situation was deemed safe. This is the second case of someone in Florida being infected with Nigleria foliare in just over six months. While certainly scary, this amoeba is extremely rare. And on the bright side, it's refreshing to hear a story about people in Florida snorting something up their nose and then having a piece of their head eaten that doesn't involve bath salts. And after the break, Americans get caught in a drug cartel shootout in Mexico. Welcome back. Walgreens announced they would no longer sell the abortion pill mefepristone after being threatened with legal action by 21 Republican state attorneys general. This is mostly in red states where abortion has been restricted. But they've also stopped selling the pill in some states where abortion is still mostly legal, like Kansas. The FDA set up a process for pharmacies to become certified to sell mefepristone earlier this year. 
Walgreens and several other chains are currently in the process of receiving certification. This move by Walgreens angered abortion rights advocates, and there have been calls for boycotts. California Governor Gavin Newsom said his state would no longer do business with the chain, although that might be easier said than done. The White House even weighed in, with Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre saying this. Elected officials targeting pharmacies and their ability to provide women with access to safe, effective, and FDA-approved medication is dangerous and just unacceptable. People are just now boycotting Walgreens? Welcome to the club. I refuse to step foot in one ever since they stopped carrying issues of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Reading them gave me something to do when my mom dragged me along while she filled her prescriptions. But without it, I was just standing around bored. That decision completely ruined my 20s. Come on, Mom, hurry up. Speaking of old people, former South Carolina governor and current Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley called for competency tests for politicians over the age of 75. First Lady Jill Biden, wife of 80-year-old President Joe Biden, called this ridiculous. And 81-year-old Senator Bernie Sanders said, We are fighting racism. We're fighting sexism. We're fighting homophobia. I think we should also be fighting ageism. Trust people, look at people, and say, you know, this person is competent. This person's incompetent. There are a lot of 40-year-olds out there who ain't particularly competent. Ironically, if it weren't for the fact Democrats always mention racism, sexism, and homophobia, I'd assume Sanders bringing those up out of nowhere was a sign of dementia. The waiter was sexist. Sure they were, Grandpa. Let's get you back to bed. The U.S. Department of Agriculture released new requirements for allowing meat packers to put Product of USA stickers on their packaging. This is meant to let consumers know if their meats were really made in the U.S. This new rule only allows that sticker on meats that were born, raised, slaughtered, and processed in the United States. Under the old requirements, that sticker could be put on any meat that was imported but slaughtered or processed in the U.S. So that would be like if an iPhone was built, assembled, and programmed in China, but packaged by Best Buy with a giant American flag sticker over it saying, raised locally. In response to these new requirements, the Chick-fil-A cows are not only telling people to eat more chicken, but they're also pretending to be Mexican. Support local farmers. Muchos gracias. Speaking of Mexico, four Americans traveling to the Mexican border town of Matamoros so that one of them could get a cosmetic procedure were caught in a cartel shootout and kidnapped. Two of the Americans were found dead, and the other two were returned to the U.S. alive, but one wounded. A Mexican woman was also killed in the shootout. According to U.S. officials, these Americans were likely taken by mistake. And someone claiming to speak for the cartel apologized for the incident and said they turned those responsible over to authorities. Police discovered five men bound with zip ties in a truck near the intersection where four Americans were kidnapped last week, with a note claiming to be from a Gulf cartel faction saying it wanted to hand over those behind the abductions. Mexican cartels generally don't kill American citizens, except with their poisonous drugs, of course. But directly murdering Americans is not standard practice, because they don't want to give the U.S. government an excuse to interfere with them. So they probably didn't realize they were Americans when they shot at and kidnapped them. The town of Matamoros is listed under a Level 4 Do Not Travel Advisory, the highest warning issued by the U.S. State Department, due to the area being overrun with cartel violence. So if you're thinking of going there for medical tourism, I'd recommend against it. Unless, of course, your only other option is Walgreens, in which case, you probably still shouldn't go. But I understand why you feel it might be worth the risk. And after the break, Trump says he'll run for president even if he's criminally indicted. Welcome back. Former President Donald Trump told reporters at the Conservative Political Action Conference that he would still run for president in 2024, even if he's criminally indicted. Trump could potentially face criminal indictment for alleged election interference in Georgia and or his alleged role in the January 6th storming of the Capitol and or for a payment given to Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential campaign. Trump said, oh, absolutely, I won't even think about leaving. Probably it'll enhance my numbers, but it's a very bad thing for America. It's very bad for the country. The answer was so predictable, even ChatGPT was like, that's too on the nose even for us. I said the only thing that could stop Trump from running for president in 2024 
would be dying, but even then, I'm not so sure we wouldn't see zombie Trump on the campaign trail. <sighs> Don't you hate it when zombies run? Speaking of the January 6th storming of the Capitol, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy gave 40,000 hours of security footage from the January 6th Capitol riot to Fox News host Tucker Carlson. On his program, Carlson said the footage showed mostly peaceful chaos. I guess he was having a CNN moment. Carlson showed clips of QAnon shaman Jake and Jelly, also known as Jacob Chansley, who became synonymous with the violence that erupted that day, being escorted through the Capitol by police officers. This uh, certainly paints a different picture of how he and several others were portrayed as violent insurrectionists who broke into the building by force. George W. Bush said that the January 6th protests were worse than 9-11, which is a terrible analogy, even before this footage got released. For that to be true, security from the World Trade Center would have had to escort the planes into the buildings. Democrats and even some Republicans accuse Carlson of cherry-picking the footage to push a narrative and sanitize what happened on January 6th. However, left-leaning media and politicians have been pushing their own narrative, calling January 6th a deadly insurrection. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer criticized McCarthy and Carlson, saying, with disregard of the risks and knowing full well he was lying, lying to his audience, Fox News host Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not a violent insurrection. Well, it wasn't. And that's according to the FBI, who concluded months ago that the January 6th protests were not an insurrection, by definition, because insurrections need to be coordinated. And you can tell by all the people wandering aimlessly through the halls of the Capitol, this wasn't coordinated. They look like people who say they'll figure out what to do on their vacation after they get there, then never do anything interesting. This is why you always make a spreadsheet, people. The left has also often claimed that Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who was assaulted with a fire extinguisher and pepper spray during the mostly peaceful chaos, died the next day as a result of his injuries. But it was later determined he died from natural causes, suffering multiple strokes. Carlson showed footage of Sicknick walking around the Capitol after his assault and said this was proof the attack on him had nothing to do with his death. However, Sicknick's family criticized Carlson and said the coroner's report claimed the events of January 6th played a role in his condition. So yes, Carlson is likely cherry-picking and pushing a narrative for his viewers. But that's not much of a surprise since, you know, it's Tucker Carlson. That's like being surprised that Chester Cheetah is pushing a narrative on Cheetos. They're not dangerously cheesy, they're mostly peacefully cheesy. But Carlson exposed how the left was also cherry-picking and pushing misinformation of their own, trying to portray the thousands of people at the Capitol on January 6th as deadly insurrectionists who organized and tried to overthrow the government, when in reality, they were wildly unorganized and several were actually led around the Capitol by police officers who didn't appear to be trying to arrest them. The left spends so much time trying to fight misinformation, yet it's responsible for a lot that's out there too. The only thing more frustrating than that is the fact that they put me in a position where I have to, at least partly, defend Tucker Carlson. I've said before and I'll say it again, we live in the weirdest timeline. So the police were partially to blame for January 6th. Maybe officers need more training. I think that's something most could agree on. Well, except dozens of protesters in Atlanta who threw rocks and Molotov cocktails at police officers outside an under construction police training facility. 23 were charged with domestic terrorism, although CNN will likely refer to this as mostly peaceful domestic terrorism. I'm starting to think no one really knows what mostly peaceful means. This training facility, dubbed Cop City by opponents, is being protested by those who feel this will only further militarize the police. Making matters worse is the fact that environmentalist Manuel Esteban Pais Tehran was shot to death by police just over a month ago while protesting this facility. Police say Tehran opened fire on them while his peers say he would never do such a thing. The director of Community Movement Builders, a group of activists, said the language being used by police, calling those arrested outside agitators, 
is meant to separate protesters and meant to criminalize and detach a movement from its homegrown origins. Um, I'm not sure how homegrown the organization can be when it had members come in from Canada and France. Definitely can't put a product of USA on this protest. You know what? I think I have a solution that can make everyone happy. Just turn this facility into a Colombian hippo sanctuary. This way, activists can feel like they stopped the so-called cop city and did something positive for the environment, and police can feel good knowing they locked up a bunch of dangerous drug fiends. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.